Good morning. How are you? Do you have your expectation turned up? If you don't, turn it up. Because I'm expecting a miracle from God today. How many of you are ready for God to do something in your heart? Hey, man, this house is full of people. In Jesus' name, there's not an empty seat anywhere. You may not see it today, but I see it. People are coming from everywhere. God is filling this place with his power and his glory. Do you realize that if you've accepted Jesus as Lord of your life, the power of the Holy Spirit is inside of you, ready to bust out and affect your world, change the lives of people around you. God's ready to do some great things in you. Amen? Amen. He's ready to do some big things inside of you, through you. Let me make some confessions this morning. Listen to this. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. If you agree, just say amen. amen. I am forgiven. Amen. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. I am more than a conqueror. Amen. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above only and not beneath. Amen. I'm alive in Christ Jesus, my Lord. Amen. I've been redeemed from the curse of the law. I possess the mind of Christ. Amen. I have God's power in me, and it is operating through me. Amen. I am the salt and light to the world. Amen. I am part of the end-time harvest. Amen. I am an overcomer. Amen. I am victorious. Amen. I am blameless. Amen. I love my neighbor as myself. I love my God with all my heart, all my soul, all my mind, and all my strength. Amen. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Amen. The world is my inheritance. Amen. I am born of God, and the evil one cannot touch me. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father, for the promises you've given us. We're walking in the fullness of those promises. If you agree, I just want you to shout, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Amen! Psalms 95 verse 1 says this, O come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Psalms 98 verse 4 says, Shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth and sing for joy and sing praises. Psalms 100 verse 1 says, Shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. My question is this. Are you ready to shout joyfully to the Lord this morning? Amen. That's not a shout. Are you ready to shout this morning for the Lord? Amen. Amen. Let's stand. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you, God, for the grace and the anointing of the presence of the Holy Spirit. I thank you, God, that through the grace of Jesus, by faith, Lord, we stand pure and holy and righteous before you. I thank you, God. Lord, I praise you this morning for this gathering of believers, for this gathering of children of God. Lord, that we're here in this, in this sanctuary and we're here online. And I thank you for each person, Lord, who's come out and who's tuned in. And Lord, our hearts are ready to receive from you. So Lord, we commit ourselves to you. We are, we're, Lord, we're filled up with a shout of joy because I thank you that because Jesus is in us, the joy of the Lord consumes us. Father, I thank you for it this morning. We worship you. We give you glory. We give you honor. Thank you, God. Lord, we commit this time to you. Just lift your hands to the Lord and give him this time. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I give you my worship. We praise you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Thomas? Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that makes
hearts again Increase in us we pray Unveil why we're made Come set our hearts ablaze with hope Like wildfire in our very souls Holy Spirit come and us now And we are your church And we need your power Your kingdom first. We hunger and we thirst. We refuse to waste our lives. For yours our joy and pride. To see the captive's heart release. The hurt, the sick, the poor at peace. We lay down our lives for heaven's God.
Isaiah 61 says that the Spirit of the Lord God is upon us to anoint us. And one of the things he said is that he's given us the spirit of praise for the garment of heaviness, or the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And that word heaviness means to dim your light. And the enemy church attacks you throughout the week to cause your light to become dim. And when we walk in this place and we begin to lift up the name of Jesus together corporately, it causes that, that, that garment of praise to rise up upon us, to lay upon us. And that spirit of heaviness, we have to cast it off of us. And the Bible says that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And it says that the, the joy of the Lord is our strength. So church, here's what's happening right now is that God is trying to take the joy that's inside of your spirit and begin to allow it to come out and manifest, not happiness, but joy where nothing can take that away from you. It is an attribute of God. God wants your joy to rise up. Stand in his presence. We sang this song and said, that's why we gather here is to encounter your love. And this morning, God just wants to wrap his arms around you. He wants to hold you. He wants his love to penetrate the, the, the cares of the world. He wants his love to, to tear down the walls that have been built up around your heart. God wants to touch you. He wants to establish his joy, his love, his peace his gentleness, his goodness. He wants to establish that inside of you, that you live, you live with that alive in you. A gentleness, a peace, a joy. No matter what you're going through, you may be going through some ugly things, but the one thing that the ugly things of this world cannot do, it cannot take your Jesus. It cannot when we look and we rely upon him and we put ourselves in him no matter what goes on around us his joy his love will consume us and carry us into the presence of the Lord Paul wrote and said I've called you to come and sit with me in heavenly places it's a message from the Lord this morning church we just need to see ourselves know that we're in the presence of the Lord and that we're setting with him in heavenly places and he's teaching he's loving on us he's caring for us one more time we're going to sing this and I just want you to hear the words and let it penetrate and if you're carrying heaviness cast it off First Peter 5 7 says cast all your cares upon him heaviness is a care and it dims your light and we are the light of the world. And that's why the enemy tries to dim you so the world can't see light. But light penetrates the darkness. And when light comes, darkness has to go. So this morning, allow Jesus to let that light shine again. Let the joy of the Lord, the love of God rise up inside of you. Let's sing this again. Let's worship Jesus and let his love Penetrate your heart this morning. The atmosphere is changing now. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around. Yet the Spirit.
in this place. are in this place. Do you believe it? Do you believe that God wants to touch you? There's a lot of times that we have faith to believe for someone else to be healed, for someone else to be set free, for someone else to be delivered, for someone else. But too, so many times, because of our circumstances, because of what we've gone through, we don't believe God will do it for us. And we carry on like normal. Church, I'm here to tell you that God loves you. Listen, listen. I, I, I want you to do this. I want you to just put your hands right here and say, God loves me. God loves me. God loves me. God loves me. Enough to heal me, to set me free, to deliver me, to bring me out of the junk I'm in to bring me through the situation. God loves me. You haven't done anything too big, too bad, that would take his love away from you. He loves you. Wow. So Father, I pray over the people this morning that there will be a fresh revelation of who they are in Jesus Christ who they are, that they are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, that they are the hope, they're filled with his joy, they're filled with his love. Father, I pray right now that the lie of the enemy that comes against us, that torments our mind, that we are nothing, that we are failures, that Lord, all of those things, we come against those lies and we speak the truth of the word into our hearts. That greater is he who's in us than he who is in the world. And through him, we are overcomers. We are more than conquerors. We walk victorious because Jesus died for our lives. And he's welcomed us into the kingdom of light and taken us out of the kingdom of darkness. He set our feet upon a rock. He is our rock. He's caused us to set with you, Father, in heavenly places and learn grow. I thank you today, God, that right now, that people's bodies are being touched, being healed, set free, Father. <laughs> Lord, if they need new limbs, give them new limbs. If they need a new stomach, give them a new stomach. Lord, I pray over them right now that there is a newness in our life, a freshness, a wholeness by the Spirit of God praise you for it. I worship you. The emotional heaviness, it's gone. If you receive it, if you allow it. See, Jesus died for the heaviness. Jesus died for the hurt, the pain, the anguish, and we have to surrender it to him. So Father, we surrender to you this morning. And as we surrender to you, that old song, Lord, I surrender all. Lord, that means all. The hurts, the pains, the anguish, the torment. We surrender it all to you. And when we surrender our junk to you, you give us your joy, your love, your peace, your grace, your goodness, your, your mercy. Thank you. Thank you. We receive it this morning, Lord. And I just know, Lord, that you're healing hearts this morning. You're ministering to people today. Father, I thank you for it. I rejoice. Church, just lift your hands. Just lift your hand to the Lord and say, Lord, I receive from you right now. I receive from you. I drink in your presence. I drink in. I drink in. Lord, you said to the woman at the well, if you drink of me, you'll never thirst again. So, Lord, we drink in of Jesus right now. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We worship you. We adore you. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Wow. Freedom.
freedom. Man, you may have carried things for years, but today God is breaking some things off of you. And he cares about you. Greg was singing that I heard this in my spirit Jesus said I've had mercy on you welcomed you into the brethren we just have to receive it Father thank you for gently loving us this morning for breaking off every anxiety Depression, loss of hope, gar that that the spirit of heaviness, breaking it off of us. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Your word doesn't say you break the yoke, the word says you destroy the yoke. Thank you for destroying the yokes that keep us bound. <laughs> Thank you, God. We rejoice in you this morning. We rejoice in Jesus' name. Amen. Isn't God good? Just the sweetness of his presence, his love, and how he just wants to embrace you. Wow. Give someone real close to you. Just give them a hug. You don't have to get up and move around. Just hug someone close. Something's stirring. Something's stirring. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Go ahead. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Go ahead. Thank you, Jesus. During worship, I was thinking about the story in the scripture where a Samaritan woman came to a well. You know the story? A Samaritan woman came to a well all by herself all by herself. I was thinking about each one of us coming to, to the well this morning all by ourselves. Yeah. And at the well, she met living water. That's right. Remember the story? Jesus came, didn't he? Jesus came to her. She was broken. Mm -hmm. She was messed up. She was there all by herself. And Jesus came. And he brought her a revelation yeah. of his love. Guess what happened this morning? Jesus came yeah. to your well. And he came yeah. and he stood right with you by himself, just you and him. 
And you know what he did for you this morning? He brought you a revelation of his love. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's good. That's good. Thank you, Lord. You know, it's interesting how last week we had such a uh, shouting, exciting, you know, kind of jump up and down type of service. And today we come in and God's just gently loving and sharing his hope. I just love how God works. You know, he knows exactly what you need when you walk into this place and how to lift you up and how to build you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, let me give you some announcements real quick. Um, we have a lot of things that are going on. Wednesday night, 6.30 is our Bible study. Uh, we're, we're studying right now on who we are in Christ Jesus. And if you have missed that, let me tell you, it has been really powerful. It is really doing some things in my heart. And um, if you can't attend, you can watch online on Facebook. Um, we set tables up in here just and, and we open it up for discussion and we really just teach. And if you're on Facebook, we put the camera right at the end of the table to where it looks like you are right there with us. And so we're excited about people joining us online. Um, Wednesday night, and then Thursday night, we have our men's recovery group where Greg teaches. And um, I'm hearing good response from the recovery group. Not a lot of guys are coming yet, but I'm hearing some really good things there. So uh, guys, just continue to get involved there. Uh, Sunday mornings, 9 o'clock is our Spanish-speaking service, 11 o'clock is our English speaking service. Just want you to know about that. I want to talk to you about the food ministry and the care closet and the free meal that we do every month on the third Saturday. Um, we're, we're, we have made the decision to take a couple of months off and we're revamping everything. Um, we came to the point that our food um, three different months it didn't show up and that puts us into a great uh, not us but it puts people into great turmoil when they're standing out in line and we have to open the door and say I'm sorry the truck's not coming um, it creates an issue and so we are revamping how we do that we're going to take we're going to we're going to take a couple months off and um, we're renegotiating with the company we get our food from Part of the problem is that they bring the food to us, and so now we're, we're just re-talking with them and, and visiting with them about us picking the food up. Um, and so we're, we're just negotiating. So we're taking some time off to revamp, to put it all back together, and then we'll relaunch our food ministry and the care closet come April. Same Saturday, but we're, we've got to put some things in order. Because here's what we don't want to do. We don't want to put a bad taste in people's mouths. We don't want people showing up and getting, and getting turned away and then coming, you know, and then going away and say, well, that church down the street, you know, we want people to say things. We, we, first, we want them to know the love of Christ. We want to use it as a ministry. We're just not here to hand food out. We're here to bless people with the love of Jesus. So we're going to revamp. Uh, the, the, the leaders decided to take three months off, January, February, March, as we redo this. And so pray uh, that everything will come together, all the details. Um, uh, between now and then, we're going to be restocking our shelves. Uh, if you want to help with that and you're at the grocery store, you know, pick up items, you know, peanut butter and jelly and cereal and spaghetti and spaghetti sauce and macaroni cheese, you know, that kind of stuff. You know, we put those in boxes and we'll stock our shelves with it. But we're revamping it. The food ministry has been going for about 10 years. And um, uh, here, here's the thing that I've realized about any um, project. It has a lifespan. And when it comes to the end of that way that you do it, you have to revamp or you kill it. I mean, either you kill it or you revamp it to give it new life. And the food ministry needs new life. It came to the point that the people who were coming were, were coming to a point of very uh, demanding and almost disrespectful. We had one person, we were 
The truck came late. We were unloading the truck, and we didn't open at 10 o'clock. We opened at 1020, and when we opened the door, the first person looked at us and said, it's about time you're holding me up. I wanted to say, well, just go right on out that door <laughs> because we don't want to hold you up. And so just, you know, that was my flesh. I didn't. I gave her food. My flesh didn't want to give her food, but we gave her food. <laughs> and so we just have to revamp. And so that's what we're doing with the food ministry. So here's what I need from you. I need you to pray. I need you to pray that every door will be open, that God wants open. Um, I, l I learned this years ago when I was, you know, under apprenticeship, if you want to say that, in ministry, that somebody said if a ministry um, isn't producing fruit, then you cut it off. Because that's what the Bible says. If a branch isn't producing fruit, you cut it off so the rest of the tree is healthy. All right, what are you guys doing to me back there? <laughs> okay, there we go. Let's see what happens. Anyway, so um, we're going to take those three months off and we're going to revamp that. Um, so be praying about that. Put these dates in your calendar. We are gearing up Easter is about 50 days away. It's on April 1st, and we are going to fool the devil this year because he's going to lose a lot of people. Amen? I mean, it's April Fool's Day, and we are going to fool the devil because he's giving up a lot of people that day because we're just going to take them out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Wow, you should be excited about that, <laughs> people coming out of the kingdom of darkness. So that's our goal, that's our direction. So we want to do, we've got two um, all-church cleanup days, um, February 24th at 10.30. It's immediately following the women's meeting. They have their meeting from 9.30, 10.30, and at 10.30, from about 10.30 to 3, we're going to be having an all-church cleanup day. Um, each department will take their area of ministry and focus. Ch the children's church will be focused on the children's wing. You know, we'll have different areas focused on things. We've got to finish up some of the remodel stuff. Just needs a little bit of stuff. Um, and so we're just going to do a lot of cleaning that day and working on the 24th. And then again on March 10th at 9 o'clock in the morning, we're going to do another all-church cleanup day. Uh, the first day will be focused inside. The second day we'll do some things outside and inside. But we're going to take those two days and just get ready for Easter. And then on March 31st, is that the last day of March? Does March have 31 days? Okay. So that Saturday will be our church uh, Easter outreach. And we are going to reach into our community. The last two years we've done that, we've had over 500 people. And so we're expecting even more this year. We have already got all the Easter eggs, right? We bought a bunch last year after Easter. So we already have about 3,500 Easter eggs. Um, so now what we need is just candy to fill them up with. Okay, so when you go to the store, just buy little candies and bring it in so we can start filling the eggs. This year when we do the outreach, because we look back over the last two years, and there was a large, large, large um, part of the community that came to the outreach was Hispanic and spoke Spanish. So we're going to reverse it this year. Everything we do will be done in Spanish and interpreted into English. But the outreach will be basically focused into the, to the Hispanic community to reach our community. 51% of our community around this church is Hispanic, and we're, gonna, we're, we're taking that Easter outreach to reach them. So I already know some of you are sitting there going, well, I don't speak Spanish. So can you make popcorn? Can you put a hot dog in a hot dog bun? Can you lay eggs out on the ground? Then we need you to help on the Easter outreach. You know, uh, people always make excuses. No excuses. We're going to reach our neighborhood. We started our Spanish service, by the way, which is going really good at 9 o'clock. And uh, we're going to take this Easter outreach to reach into the Spanish community and let them know how much we love them and care about them and that we want them to be a part of Abundant Life Church. And so uh, gear up for that because Teresa and Pastor uh, Leela will be meeting next week and putting all together that whole outreach and then we'll bring it to the church and present what all we're going to be doing. So we have great things coming up. 
Uh, the last Sunday of April will be our next Bless the Children Sunday. And so get that on your calendar so you know that. Amen. I think that's all the announcements. You ready to give? You have an announcement? Hard to part. Okay. Give it. And um, she has three little kids, and they're raising money for her mom to be taken to Mexico to um, yeah. to learn more. Okay. If you can write all that information down, then we can get it onto our Facebook page, and people can help and reach out to her. If you'll just write it and give it to the ushers, and then we have all that information. That would be great. And, and pray about that church. If God wants you to help and uh, bless that family, do that. Amen. Thank you for sharing that. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. I've really been encouraging you about giving. And um, I've been really honest with you about where the church is at. Um, the last few months, we've hit some real struggle in our finances. Our bills are paid. Uh, I have to tell you this, last Sunday, um, when we looked at our books, um, Brenda called me and said, well, we didn't pay you last week, and we're not going to be able to pay you much this week. And, you know, my whole stand on that is this. You didn't call me here, God sent me, and God will take care of me. Whether you pay me or not, God will take care of me. And I told Brenda, we're just going to pray and believe God. Well, on Tuesday... Um, we had a person who gave us a very nice, sizable check, which got us all caught up and uh, brought us to the place to where we're um, back in the black and doing better, but we're not great. And so I just want to encourage you to, to give. Um, somebody said this to me the other day. If you depended upon your livelihood by the way you gave to the church, how would you make it? Just a thought. So I want you to think about that. The church needs about $7,500 a month to function properly. Our insurance alone is over $800 a month. That's just for um, property insurance and we have to have it. If we don't have property insurance, we can't unlock the door. And just that one bill is over $800 a month. And so I just want you to just realize what's going on financially. I've asked some of the leaders uh, to share their heart about giving, and so Emma's gonna come this morning and just give a testimony of what God has done in her life because of her faithfulness. So Miss Emma, would you come and share? She may preach, so get ready. <laughs> I just want to share what God has done for me because um, in 2014, um, that's when they closed the state school, and I worked there. I had 22 years with the state, and they closed it, so uh, September was my last day there, and I hadn't worked from September for three years, from September 14, 2014 to 2017 but God he took care of me and I say this I say because um as I've been in this church I I didn't have a job and but God he provided for me every month every time I didn't go without a bill being paid but in my church that I before I came here I always was a, a tither and I gave my tithes you know and I say because uh because I return, I don't say pay my tithes, I say return to God because we can't pay God, you know. So I return to God. Every month I return to God. So now I say, well, I didn't have a job. Yeah, they gave us a, um, a buyout, but that wasn't even a year's salary, you know, and that, I used my savings. But anyway, but God, he just took care of me, and I know because I was faithful in paying my, returning to God my tithes, you know. 
and I say, I'm living off the overflow, you know, because God is faithful. You have to be, you faithful to God, he's going to be faithful to you, you know, and, and well, every month, you know, my checking account start getting a little low, getting a little low, but every month got a little low, there come a check in the mail. God put on somebody's heart to sit, give me some money. You know, he said, you give and it should be given unto you good measure. Press down and shaking together and running over shall men give unto your bosom. See, God, he uses people, you know, but he wants us to be faithful. And, you know, I just, it's just the, it's just the principle of returning to God. You know, he's, he loves us and he's going to provide for you, you know. And, and um, I always would say, um, Lord, you say you're going to provide my every need according to your riches and glory. So I wasn't weary. Nah. For three years, he took care of me, you know, not a bill, a light bill, not um, electricity, a bill not cut off, you know, everything because God provides, because I know, because being faithful. You be faithful to God. God's going to be faithful to you, faithful to you. And I just say, you know, I dare you. I challenge each, each one of y'all, if you don't return to God, return to God and see how you're going to be blessed. You ain't going to lack for nothing. He said, God is my shepherd. I shall not want. That's I'm not going to want for nothing. I'm not going to like for nothing because he's going to take care of me. He's dead. He, he's already undid it, and he's continued to do it. And just, and I'm going to be through here, just like, the, <laughs> just like, okay, I started substituting teaching, you know, just like in September. And then there's a couple of months where I didn't, didn't um, uh, sub so many days during the holidays. And so then the other enemy comes and say, no, nah, you can't return to God. I said, uh-uh, I am. So I just wrote my little check, whatever it was for. You know how much you make or how little you make, you return to God and you're going to be blessed. And so I did went ahead and return to God. And then that same was like that Monday, my son come give me the exact same amount of money that I returned to God. <laughs> God returned it 100 fold. That's how God is. That's how good God we serve. I dare you, return to God. Amen. So three years, God took care of her because she was faithful for years. Let me read this to you out of 2 Corinthians chapter 9. It says this. Now this I say, he who sows sparingly shall also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully shall also reap bountifully. Let each one do just as he has purposed in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful Giver. Look at your neighbor and say, be cheerful. Be cheerful. Be cheerful. God, now launch this. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, that always having all sufficiency in everything, you may have in abundance for every good deed. As it is written, he scattereth abroad, he gave to the poor, his righteousness abides forever. Now watch this. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. Listen, if you don't have anything to give, ask God. He'll give it to you. He'll open the doors. I'm telling you, church, you cannot outgive God. You know, you, you can't. And you just, uh, you know, I, the, in last week when Brenda called me and said, well, we can't pay you again this week, you know, the enemy goes, see? And I just said to Brenda, I said, I'm not worried about it. God is my source. And when that phone call came the next day and said, hey, I need you to pick up this tithe check. And, and when it came in, it more than abundantly took care of everything in the church that we were at, at that pressing point. You know, it's like, God, you're good. All the time. You know, so when you give, Lord, I'm giving this out of obedience because I love you. And I thank you that you are my God and you'll supply all my needs according to your riches and glory. Thank you. Ushers, come on and let's, let's give this morning. If you want to give online or, or if you're watching online and you want to give and we'd love for you to give and be a part of this church even more, um, go right there on Facebook and hit shop now. It'll take you to our web page and to our uh, giving page to where you can give. Just follow the instructions. And uh, it's very simple. just takes about a minute to get done. And so if you're watching online, we want you to be a part. And giving is being a part. And so uh, take that next step and connect with us in your giving. Father, we thank you this morning that all of our needs are met. Lord, even at times when we look at the circumstance and go, how? 
we know that you meet all of our needs. You supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. And Lord, I just, I just thank you that we can stand on that promise. But I also speak, Lord, to the enemy and tell him, your hands are bound. You no longer can hold back blessings from the people in this body. I thank you, God, that you pour out blessings upon the people here. You open the windows of heaven, Lord, and you pour out a blessing that they cannot even contain abundantly. Father, we thank you for it. And Lord, not just so we can hoard it up, but Father, you pour out blessings upon us so we can give to others, that we can bless and we can minister and that we can take this ministry into, into new avenues, doing new things for the kingdom of God, touching more people, more hearts, and bringing them into the kingdom of light. I thank you for it, Father, and I give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Ushers, if you would, please. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. All right, grab your Bibles. Teenagers, middle school, fifth grade through eighth grade. You are free to follow Pastor Teresa. Eighth grade, go have a great time. Listen, our little kids, we, we don't babysit our children. We teach them the word. And, and that is something that Teresa just pushes into our teachers constantly. We do not want you babysitting. We want our teachers teaching the word. When our kids come out of there, we want them to know the word. We want them to know the scripture. We want them to be strong in the Lord. You know, because let, let me just share this with you. I was, I was working with my granddaughters the other day, my, the twins, and I was helping them do some homework. And they had to read a couple of stories. And as we were reading the stories, I was, I was, um, I was appalled by what I was reading and the humanistic thinking, the, the worldly, I, and I guess I shouldn't have been surprised it was a public school, but just the, the philosophy that, that they were giving these nine-year-olds. I'm like, look, you're, you're teaching history. Just teach history. Don't give philosophy. You don't have to give a philosophy in history. Just lay out what happened. But I'm reading this, and, and I'm like, I had to stop, and I had to talk to my granddaughters and say, listen, this isn't right. This is contrary to the word of God. So we need to be aware of what's going into our children's mind. I was, I was in a, the other, it's interesting, I was in a grocery store the other day and there was a worker from the grocery store that was right behind me and I was, I was looking at cereal and there was, I, I'm, I don't, I'm not one of those that listen to music very often. You can get in my car and I never turn the radio on. Um, I, just, I just don't listen to the music like I used to. But there was a song that was playing over the, over the intercom in, the, in this grocery store, and it, and it just kind of caught my attention, and I, and I don't know why, because music normally doesn't do that, but it caught my attention, and then I heard the girl behind me singing it really softly. And I was listening to this music, and, and I guess there was one line that caught my attention, and, 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 I, was, and I thought, did I just hear what I thought I just heard? And so I just stopped and I listened and I, and I listened. And I, I, you could have knocked me over with a feather at that moment because of the, the vulgarity that was coming out of the song. I was, I mean, I was like, and, and they weren't cussing, it wasn't that. It was the things they were saying. It was, it was the, the, the image, let me put it, it was the image that they were developing in your mind because of the words they were speaking in the song. And I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm literally, I'm froze here looking at, listening to this song, and this young lady, she probably couldn't have been 23, 24, was behind me, and I was almost embarrassed to be on the same aisle as she's humming this song. It was that bad. 
And when the song got over, I just was like, did that really say what I thought it said? And I, and I, and I turned and I looked at her and I said, I don't want to embarrass you, or, or, but I have a question. Did that song, was it saying, and that's all I had to say, and she's like, oh yeah, that's what it was saying. I didn't even have to, I would just, and I'm like, Lord, what are our young people putting into their minds? What are they hearing? What are they listening to? And I say that because it is the responsibility of us as parents and grandparents and the church to make sure that what's going into our children is going to develop the righteousness of God. I, I, I think about, you know, I, I think I haven't been out of school that long. You know, 30 years is it? 30 years. Just wait till you get there. Thirty. Let me see. I graduated in eighty-one. How long is that? Holy cow! Is that thirty? Is that thirty-five years? Thirty. Come on, quit going up. I mean, I was at thirty. Sounded bad enough. Thirty-seven years. Jeez. But I was only 16 when I graduated, so <laughs> I was young. <laughs> I'm the, I was. That's true. <laughs> well, I just barely turned 17. Um, it was hard enough when we were kids growing up. And to see what the kids are going through today, and they never get away from it, you know, because of these things, they never get away from it. I was listening to some psychologists the other day. There was a panel of them, about five or six of them, and they were talking about social media. I'm like, this isn't anything I planned on teaching today. I don't even know why I'm going all these places. But I was listening to this panel of psychologists, and they were talking about social media, and they said, what age do you guys think that children should be allowed to have social media? Um, and they all agreed, all of them, and I think there was six, five or six, all of them said children should never have social media under the age of 18. They can't handle it. They can't handle it. Their minds are not functioning right, and they can't get any rest. They don't get any rest. You know, they have their phone all night long. They're waking up all night. People are, you know, boys have learned not to text my daughter after 10 o'clock because they will get an earful from me. And I just tell them flat out, you text her again and you will be blocked from her social media from here on out. And she's 18 and I don't care because she still lives in my house, right? I mean, it's just, it's like, okay, we've got to be aware of what's going on in our homes and what's going on around, around us and in our lives because the enemy, huh, well, 1 John 10.10 10 says, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And that's his goal, is to steal, kill, and destroy. He's here to steal your life. He's here to steal your testimony. He's here to steal your marriage. He's here to steal your children. He's here to steal the righteousness of God out of you. He doesn't want you to be righteous. And we have to be aware of that. So this month we're talking about love will build a bridge. I want you to go to Isaiah chapter 43. And I want you to write this, write this theme down. And if there's a, 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 a title to my message, it would be this. Love will build a bridge to your destiny. Love will build a bridge to your destiny. Isaiah 43. Think about, first of all, let me give you a definition of what destiny is. Coming from the, from the biblical sense. 
Destiny is walking out the plan that God has for your life. It's pretty simple. If you're going to fulfill your destiny, you're going to walk out the plan that God has for your life. I want you to think about John chapter 17. How many of you love John chapter 17? It's one of my favorite chapters. John chapter 17 is a very intimate, private moment between Jesus and the Father. And he's, he's praying this hours before he dies. It's after the Passover that he celebrated with his disciples. I personally believe that this is part of the prayer that Jesus prayed in Gethsemane um, while the disciples were sleeping. But John 17 says this. Jesus said this. He said, Father, you and I are one. How many of you agree with that? That's what Jesus said. You and I are one. And then he makes this comment. Make them one with us as we are one. When we become born again, we are baptized or engrafted into the body of Christ. And we become one with Christ. And that was his prayer. Make us one as we are one. In other words, listen to this. Jesus walked in the power of the Holy Spirit, healing the sick, raising the dead, delivering people. And the same power that worked in Jesus is in us. How many believe that? Few people really believe that. They've heard it, but do they believe it? They don't believe it. How do I know? Because they're not out laying hands on people. You know, Jesus laid hands on people everywhere he went. And there were places that it says that there were great, everybody in this city was healed because of their faith. In other places, it says nobody in this city was healed because of their unbelief. Walking out the destiny of our life is accomplishing the will that God has for us, the plan that God has for you. And God has a plan for you, and his plan is not over until you take your final breath and you leave this earth. And I don't ever want to hear anybody say, well, I'm retired or I'm old. Moses was 80 before he started leading the children of Israel and died at 120. And he would have continued to live if he had not completely disobeyed God when God gave him a direct order. Abraham was 100 before Isaac was born. So don't ever tell me that, well, I'm this age and so I'm retired. We don't ever retire from the kingdom of God, ever. You may retire from work, but you don't retire from the kingdom. Because let me ask you this, those of you who have retired, did you retire from cleaning your house? <laughs> Some days. <laughs> but the next day you got to go back to cleaning the house. So you didn't retire. You just took a day off. <laughs> we don't retire from the kingdom of God. God has a destiny that he wants us to walk out. And I want to ask you this question. And, and, it, and it kind of goes to your state of mind and how you think. How many of you, and, and, and I can't answer this for you. You have to answer it for yourself and you don't have to raise your hand, but how many of you are sitting at a red light waiting for God to give you a green light? Do you know that's how the, the majority of the church functions? Everyone feels like I'm at this red light. Okay, God, give me something to do. I'm revving the engine. <clears throat> give me something to do. Give me something to do. Give me something to do. Listen, we need to be acting like we're at a green light and we need to get moving until we hit a red light. And the only time we stop is when the red light comes. And then red lights don't stay forever. But the majority of the church put their car in neutral at the light and went to sleep and never took off again. And that's where the church is. And the destiny of the church is not being accomplished. Not in America. I was talking to somebody just yesterday. Yesterday or Friday? No, yesterday. And they made this comment. All over the world, there's revival going on, and many, many people are being saved, except in America. 
And the reason it's not is because the church has pulled up to a red light, put the car in neutral, and uh, for whatever reason, got out of the car, went to the back, sat on the bumper, and just relaxing. And that's the state of the majority of the church. You know, they're sitting on the back of the bumper, having a tailgate party, and allowing the world to go to hell as they're just enjoying their barbecue. And we all love barbecue, right? I mean, potlucks, right? Let's have a pot. Every, anybody want to have a potluck? Let's have a potluck. Everybody wants to eat together. But, but we've got to begin to function in our destiny like we're at a green light and we're moving forward. And nothing's going to stop us until God stops a red light. And he will at times drop a red light and say, take a rest. Now go. But the majority of people are functioning like they're at a red light. So I want you to look at Isaiah chapter 41. Verses 1 through 7. Did any of you catch one of the very first things I said this morning when we started service? Do do you remember? Do any of you remember one of the first things that I said this morning? And I did it on purpose because I knew I was going to ask you this question. Any of you remember what I said first thing? Nope. (laughs) In my opening dialogue... (laughs) Huh? What'd you say? I did say we're the righteousness of God in Christ. Do you remember what I said about the church? It's full. Thank you. I did. I said, this place is filled up. I wondered if any of you really heard it. Because I'm just going to give you a warning. You better quit coming late because you'll be standing. Because this place is filling up. And you're looking around going, Where? You may not see it, but I do. And they're filling up. Why? Because I'm at a green light and I'm moving. And if you you don't move, I'm going to run you over. And I'll pray for you to be raised up after I run you over, but I'm running. We're moving forward. It's the destiny. And Isaiah chapter 43 kind of begins to lay out the destiny that God has for the believers. I want you to look at verse 7 first, and then we're going to go backwards. Verse 7 says this, Therefore, whoever is called by my name, stop right there. How many of you are called by the name of God? Raise your hand if you're called by God. Hold it up. Look around. See who's called by God. Most of you are called by God. Okay. Whoever is called by God, called by my name, and whom I've created for my glory whom I have formed, even whom I have made. Everyone who is called by my name and whom I have created for my glory, whom I have formed, even whom I have made. That's, your, that's destiny right there. That's a scripture of destiny because it's talking about you've been created for God's glory. Now, go back up to verse 1 and let's walk through some things here. I've got about 10 scriptures that, I'm gonna, that I could give this morning, but... It's already 10.25 or 12.25, so I'm going to cut it short. Verse 1 says this. <laughs> but now, thus says the Lord. Who says it? So if God's saying it, do you think we ought to pay attention to it? Okay, so the Lord is saying it, so we need to pay attention. But now, thus says the Lord, your creator, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, Don't you think it would be important that we listen to the person who created us? Two of you believe that. How many of you believe that it's important that we listen to our creator? You know, there's a a comment in scripture that says this, don't fear the one who can hurt your body. (laughs) But you need to be concerned about the one who can hold your breath. You ever, you ever been in a moment where, where you couldn't get a breath? Where, where you were choked and you couldn't? Uh, let me tell you what, that's, that's not a fun feeling, is it? Yeah. So don't fear who can hurt your body, but fear the one who can hold your breath. So he's talking here, but now thus says the Lord your creator, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear. Listen, we're not to fear as in, <gasps> I'm scared. <laughs> We're to reverence, but we're not to fear. He says, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. How many of you are thankful that you're redeemed? Isn't that a great thought? I have been bought with the price 
out of the kingdom of darkness and put into the kingdom of light. I am a child of God. I'm an overcomer. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I have been redeemed. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Do you realize God knows your name? And he doesn't just say, hey, you, you, right? Hey, hey, over there nodding your head. Hey, in the pink, right there, hey. He doesn't, anybody ever forget their kid's name? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you just kind of, wait, which one are you? <laughs> God doesn't forget your name. It says here that he knows you, he's redeemed you, he called you by name, you are his. That's pretty exciting, I think. We're talking about destiny. If you belong to him, don't you think we should be doing what he wants us to do? If he bought us with the price, shouldn't we be doing what he wants us to do? Yeah. But, but this just gets better. When you pass through the water, I'll be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire... You will not be scorched, nor will the flame burn you. Wow. Think about that. Those are promises of God. And we're talking about destiny. Listen, people get scared of stepping into their destiny because they're afraid they're going to get hurt. They're afraid they're going to get burnt. They're afraid they're going to get... Uh, 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 People are going to reject them. They're afraid that people are not going to like them. They're afraid, and the very first thing God says is, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of what's going on in this world. Don't be afraid of what people can do to you. I got you. I've got you covered. I've got you. When you go through the water, you're not going to drown. If you get caught up in the fire, you will not be scorched, nor the flames touch you. And God proved that with the three Hebrew children. Right? Right? With Shadrach, Meshach, and I thought it was a bad Negro. <laughs> Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He showed them. Walk through the fire, and you won't get burned. Do you think God likes them more than you? Not, as, not at all. See, we're talking about the destiny of God and the enemy comes to try to steal your destiny and so when you get done with life, we don't finish well. Do you know how many people do not finish well? There were only two people in Scripture, three, that really finished well and the rest of Scripture did not. Do you know who the three people were that finished well? That made it through life and they accomplished great things and didn't ha you, you read their life and they didn't have a lot of failures. Do you know who they were? Daniel was the first one. You don't find anywhere in Daniel where he slipped up, fell, he messed up, he, he had a great, you know, he, it, Daniel just, he made it. Because he determined in the beginning, I'm going to follow the plan of God and I'm going to finish well. And John the Beloved was the other one. I wanted to say Paul, but re Paul really screwed up in the beginning. <laughs> you know, he was a murderer and killed people, so really he didn't either, but he finished well. But he was, in the beginning, it was bad. But think about Daniel and think about John the Beloved. They finished well. They finished strong. They didn't quit. And the destiny that God has for us is that don't quit. I want you to finish strong. I want you to finish well. And I'm with you. Look at verse 3. He says, For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I have given Egypt as your ransom, Cush and Seba in your place. Listen, God says that he has stored up the wealth of the wicked for the righteous. Do you realize that the wealth of the wicked belongs to us? I, I, I'm going I'm to make this statement. Do you realize that every big invention that's come along, God has tried to take it through the church and the church has rejected it? God gave it to people in the church and they wouldn't use it and so it was passed on to somebody else who would invent it. The internet was, or the computer was, was given to somebody before it was given to the guy who made it big. What's his name? The guy in Seattle. 
gates. TV was given to somebody in the church before it was given to whoever created it. Because God always takes things and puts it into the church first. But the problem is, because we're at a red light waiting for a green light, we don't do what God's called us to do. And we sat there. Last year, we had the dreams all over the board. And I'm, I'm wondering, how many of you are still running with your dream that you wrote on that board? Or how many of you forgot what you wrote? I had somebody call me the other day that, that, man, that I have ministered to and loved on and cared for, and they're not here at the church anymore. They called me the other day, and they said, I'm so excited, Pastor. And I said, what's going on? They said, all of a sudden, my dream started falling into place. And within two weeks, boom, 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 boom. Why? Because you didn't give up on a dream. It's the destiny that God places inside of us. It's what's in us that God's trying to get out of us, but we're sitting at this green, at this red light waiting for, God, what do you want me to do? God, what do you want me to do? Is there anything I can do? I think I'm just going to quit asking. Or better yet, I hear this all the time. I've never heard God talk to me before. That'll cause a twitch in my neck. God is always talking. God's not silent. He's always talking. The problem is we're not listening. Revelations, when he wrote to the seven churches, he said, those of you who have an ear, listen to what the Spirit is saying. And most people don't want to listen. They're at a red light waiting for a green light. So God's here. He's waiting for us. Now, now watch this. Verse 4, watch this. Since you are precious in my sight, since you are honored and I love you. Who's he talking about? You. Look at your neighbor and say, he's talking about you. You're precious, you're honored, and he loves you. Look at your neighbor and say, hi, precious. <laughs> Go ahead, look at your neighbor and say, hi, precious. Turn around, look at the person behind you and say, hi, precious. <laughs> I know you're all going, oh, don't call me precious. It's what God calls you. God's looking down going, oh, aren't they precious? I just love them. Exactly. You're precious. And we set at a red light going, God, what do you want me to do? Have you ever been in a car with somebody who's sitting at a green light and the lights turn green and they just sit there? What do you do? <laughs> How many of you just look at them and go, did you realize the light turned green? No, what do you say? Uh, excuse me, the light's green, you're going to go today or what? Or you reach over and smack them. Light's green. I wonder if God ever wants to look at the church and just go, Pow! the light's green. Now do something. Quit just sitting there. God's given us a destiny and he says, look, I'm going to take you through the fire. You're not going to get burnt. If the waters rise, it's not going to overflow on you. I've redeemed you. I call you by name. I know who you are. I've given you Egypt. You're precious. You're honored. I love you. What are you going to do? The rest of verse 4 says, I will give you other men in your place and other people in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. So we're talking about the destiny that God has placed in your life, and it's the love. We've got to realize that, how many of you know if you're going to be at a bridge to get over it, you've got to step out on there? How many of you have heard about that bridge in China that's got a glass bottom? I saw this video yesterday. Listen to what they've done. They've taken this glass bottom, and they put a digital screen underneath it, with digital sound, so as people walk across it, the screen cracks. <laughs> I 
And they were showing this guy walking across this bridge, and it, and he looks, and the whole glass just cracks, and he jumps and grabs the side and hangs on. I'm cracking up. I'm going, I love it. <laughs> At some moment, he's going to have to get off that wall. But the church is hanging on to this wall because of fear and they don't want to move forward in the destiny that God's called them to. You have neighbors that need Jesus. And when's the last time you reached out to them to give them Jesus? When was the last time? It's the destiny. Now now look at what God says here in these other verses and then I'm going to quit. Do not fear, for I am with you. I'll bring you offspring from the east and gather you from the west. This is why I say this church is full. Because watch this. It says, I will say to the north, give them up. And to the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name and whom I've created for my glory, whom I have formed, even whom I have made. Now watch. God says there are people in the north that belong here. And there are people in the south that belong here. There are people in the west that belong here. There are people in the east that belong here, but they're not going to come unless we begin to call them in. Part of our destiny is opening our mouth and speaking the word of the Lord. How many of you know that? We have to begin to learn if we're going to walk out the destiny of God, we have to begin to speak what God's speaking. How many of you speak what God speaks? It's pretty simple. All you got to do is speak the word. So what is God speaking? Well, look, here's what he's speaking. He said, I'm going to send them to you. So uh, I'll bring your offspring from the east. So east, give up my offspring and let them come to me. Those who you've assigned to us as spiritual sons and daughters Come from the east into this house. Isn't that what he said? And then he says, um, all of you from the west that belong here, that God has destined you for Abundant Life Church, I gather you, come. Come to us. Come on. So look at the west and say, come. This is west, this way over here. Look to the west. Take your hand and say, come. All you who belong to us, come. Go ahead, do it. I know I'm looking at some of your faces and going, I don't want to look stupid. You don't look stupid. You're obeying the word. Come. You belong here. Come. That's what Jesus said. And didn't he say, okay, okay, go back up to verse one. Just go back up to verse one. But now thus says the Lord. Who's speaking? God. Listen, you got to begin to speak what you believe. You got to begin to speak the destiny. You got to begin to speak the will of God if you want it to be accomplished. You can't just sit there and go. What I think my father used to call it, you can't just sit there like an old bump on the log. Anybody ever heard that expression? Yeah, my dad had some really crazy ones. Some of them I still don't understand. That one I understand. After pastoring for 30 years, I understand that one. (laughs) God said, listen, I'm the Lord, I'm speaking here. Say to the west, gather them. Then he says, look to the north. So everyone look north, that's that way. You have to turn around, look to the north. And he says this, give them up. So, So look to the north and say, north, give up those who belong to Abundant Life Church. Some of you are still laughing. You think it's fun. No, no, North, give them up. They belong here. Satan, do not hold them back any longer. They need to be born again. They need to receive Jesus from the north. Come. Then he said, look. Then he looks to the south. Watch this. Looks to the south. It's on the board. You can just look. South, do not hold back those who belong to us. Go ahead. 
Look, bring my sons from afar, my daughters from the ends of the earth. Bring them. Bring them. There are people right now that live in other states that the Holy Spirit is speaking to and say, pack up and go to Enid. And they're going, what? How many of you believe that? And when they get to Enid, the Lord's going to say, now go to Abundant Life Church. But listen, when they walk in the door, they want to see some green-lighted people moving. Not red-lighted people going, duh. Isn't that how you feel when you see somebody, you know, <laughs> honk the horn, hey, stupid, move. <laughs> Any of you impatient when somebody's ahead of you and they won't move? <laughs> Yell at the car in front of you and your wife's going, they can't hear you. Well, they better get moving or they're going to hear me. <laughs> That's what the horn's for. That's not... Listen, we, we will make a fool of ourselves over a car parked in front of us at a green light. You know what's really funny? Do this someday. Pull up to a light with no other car around. Get out of the car and cross the street and just wait. Leave the car running. Watch people come up and honk, honk, honk. And you're not even in the car. And then you just sit there and laugh at them. Go, hey, stupid, nobody's in the car. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Don't do that. <laughs> we will think crazy things and think it's okay until it comes to the time to do spiritual activity. North, give up those who belong here. This house needs to be full. Come on. South, do not hold them back any longer. Get in this house. Wow, there are people getting ready to leave Chile coming here. The country of Chile in South America. <laughs> yeah, they're leaving their lunch. Chile. They're... <laughs> Destiny. <laughs> yeah, I know what's on his mind. Are you going to quit preaching? I'm hungry. <laughs> destiny. God has a destiny for you. And he wants you to walk it through. Now, now, now listen. As we begin to become consumed with the love of God, we'll begin to cross over that bridge. I, I, I will tell you this. God is doing something in truth in my heart that we have, we are, we're being consumed with God's love like we've never been consumed before. The last few months, God has just done something inside of us that we're just setting back and going, okay, God, you're, you're up to something. Because there is a birthing going on in our spirit that we know that God is up to something. And we're, we've got green lights. We're running. And I want to know how many of you are ready to get off the red light and move on to the green light. Two of you. Wow, I'll take the two of you. Good, three of you. I'll take you. <laughs> God has a destiny, and love will build the bridge to your destiny. But here's one of the problems. You've got to ask God. Lord, um, this is what's in my heart, so I'm going to start doing this. Is that okay? Yep, go. See, we don't ask God. We, we get so busy in our life that we forget to ask God what he wants us to do. What is our destiny? Lord, this is what's in my heart. This is what I got to do. This is what I got to do. And it'll come. And you may think, well, that's a dumb idea. Don't ever, don't ever despise small beginnings. Isn't that what scripture says? Do not despise small beginnings. But you got to start asking. James says you have not because you ask not. Then it says you ask and you ask amiss. Or in other words, you ask, but you don't know what you're asking. You've got to know the will of God. Jesus said, ask and it'll be given unto you. Seek, you shall find. Knock and the door will be open. It's time for us to start kicking some doors open. It's time for us to get off the red light and move forward with the green light that God has a destiny in this house. I saw some of your faces when I said, we're going to revamp the ministry. We're not doing any food ministry for three months. There was kind of this, oh, no, listen, revamping is good. I'm at a green light moving with the food ministry. I didn't close it down for three months to go, oh, no, I'm excited because we got new plans. We got new ideas, new thoughts, and we're moving forward with it. So we got, we, we got to start thinking the way God wants us to think. How many of you have ever read the scripture that God owns the cattle on a thousand hills? 
and he owns the hills. It's in Psalms. God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He owns the hills, and he owns the gold under the hills. Right? God owns it all. And he'll get it to us if we get off the red light and start moving into the green light. Because red light people don't get anything because they're just sitting there wondering. Green lighted people is who's going to get something because they're asking, Lord, this is, I, I'm moving, Lord. I need, I, start asking, start talking, start getting, start sharing, start letting God move you into your destiny. Okay, Lord. Some of you may be getting ready to move out of Enid. I don't know why, I just felt that in my heart. God's sending people from Chile to here. He may send you to Chile. <laughs> Not food. <laughs> to the country. What would you do if God said to you, I want you to get ready to go to Chile? How many of you would prepare to go? How many of you would be prepared? I I'm going. God said go to Chile. I'm going to go. How many of you would go? They're all going, that's a trick question. It's not a trick question. Are you going to follow God or not follow God? But you don't understand how old I am. God does. And if God's given you assignment, he'll give you the grace to do it. The only thing holding us up is us. God's given us a destiny. Wow. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you this morning for your word. And I pray for each person that their hearts will be stirred up, understanding that you have called us by name, you've created us for your glory. You know our name, you call us precious, you call us honor, you love us. There's no reason to fear because we're not gonna get burnt. The water's not gonna overtake us. Take us off of that red light mentality, Father, and move us into the green light. No, Lord, you don't have to do it. We have to do it. We make the decision today that we're moving forward in the green light. No more setting still. No more just wandering around. We're moving forward. And Lord, I give you thanks for it. Birth a new thing in our heart. I call out into the spirits of the people in this body to begin to move forward into the things of God. To be hungry for God. To rise up inside of you. The spirit man inside of you. Rise up. And take a hold of the kingdom of God. And move forward. Lord, I thank you for doing it in this body. I give you thanks for it. And I honor you today, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let me give you one more example. See the platform? How many of you like the platform? How many of you like it? It got painted this week. Can you tell it's all black now? We're not done. We're not done. <laughs> Trust me, we're not done. What are we doing? I don't know. It's all up to Thomas. He has, a, he has the green light. Take it. He sent me video. He said, I'm going to do this. Do it. He talked to me last Sunday and said, can we do that? Do it. He did it. Next Sunday will be even more different. Why? Because we're moving forward. I don't like change. Change is here. Change is coming. More change will come. You know, I know some of you didn't like it when I got rid of the pulpit. We like the pulpit. Okay. I'm glad you do. You preach then. <laughs> I don't like the pulpit. And I'm preaching, so I'm not using the pulpit. So, so change. Who said we have to do it in a certain way? Who said it has to be a certain color? Who said it has to be like this? Right? Change. We have a green light. We're moving forward. So get ready, because Abundant Life Church is changing, and you're a part of the change. Are you good with it? Amen. Amen. Go home and eat some chili. To be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for
say